You may not recognize the video playing on your screen right now, but from the fact that you clicked on this, I know that you absolutely recognize its legacy. What you are looking at is the original, the very first YouTube Rewind. It was made in 2010 as a trailer for a playlist of the year's top 10 most viewed YouTube videos. The second YouTube Rewind, released a year later, was very similar and just as simple. This time it simply featured a host, and the video itself actually counted down the top 10 in order rather than simply linking to a playlist. Both of these videos are very different from what we think of now when we hear the words YouTube Rewind. This is YouTube Rewind before anyone actually watched YouTube Rewind. It was simple and clearly corporate, but there wasn't an agenda to it. YouTube wasn't trying to push anything, they were just saying, this is what you guys watched the most this year. These videos did not discriminate between traditional media and independent online creators. They were very much just reporting the numbers of views and didn't really care whether something was internet original or not. It's not like the YouTube Spotlight channel has any control over what people watch, especially not back then, where you never heard anyone complaining about algorithms or what YouTube was or was not pushing. But because these were the videos that we'd all already seen and it wasn't exactly doing anything original with them, no one had any reason to watch this YouTube Rewind thing that was being uploaded. And so, it was ignored. For people to actually watch, they would need to do something that did capture people's attention. You know, do something a little original with the content. Maybe feature more creators than just one who is mostly known for a video she didn't make and that no one liked anyway. No offense. Honestly, I love Rebecca Black and I love Friday and I wish people would respect it as the hilarious pastiche of generic bland pop music that it is. You don't come to this channel for, for, for good opinions, you come for the hot takes. In 2012, the YouTube Spotlight channel, which uploads YouTube Rewind, got a little more experimental, and YouTube Rewind as we know it today was born. Rewind YouTube style. While the first two rewinds were little more than creatively edited top 10 videos, this had less in common with a Watch Mojo top 10 list and more in common with the gag quartet's Le Internet medley. Rewind 2012's primary influence was clearly Gisai's Gangnam Style, and was largely a recreation of his music video mashed up with a little bit of Carly Rae Jemsen's Call Me Maybe, with dozens of other references like to the Hunger Games, or to Minecraft, or that Mars rover thing, remember that? It featured around 30 creators, including Felicia Day, I Justine, Sai himself, and many others. It's small compared to the rewinds that would come later, but for the time it was bigger than anything we'd seen before. And its references were absolutely diverse, with the small caveat that most of the creators featured were, you know, ones centered in America, and very few, if any, actually were Let's Players. The Let's Play community, which by this point was the biggest genre on YouTube, was somehow largely missed, and that was the biggest misstep this video had. Overall though, it's, it's a good video. One of the better ones, if only because of nostalgia. If this was released in 2014 or 2015, it would be kind of par for the course. They were still figuring out what they wanted to be. They were still figuring out how much budget they had to be what they wanted to be. The complaints that were made were made not because we didn't like it or that we didn't understand what it was going for, but because we did see what they were going for and we wanted to see it fully realized. We wanted something even bigger and even better. And boy, did we get what we asked for. Rewind 2013 is one of the biggest and best summations of internet culture that has ever been put 
to video. It is the quintessential YouTube Rewind and absolutely the best one. I haven't seen 2018's yet, I'll have a live reaction towards the end of the video, but I'm pretty sure this is still the best one. The background music is a mashup of seven different songs, several of which are very much internet exclusive songs like Yelvis is the Fox or Shmo Yoho's Dead Giveaway. It featured over 50 creators and referenced dozens more trends, memes, and viral videos than I could ever count. And because our expectations were set relatively low with Rewind 2012, 2013 blew that so far out of the water that it doesn't matter, it was still so much bigger and better than we ever thought that we were going to actually get. Let's stop talking and do some walk. Not only does this video take everything 2012 did and make it bigger, better, more insane, every sequence of the video itself is building on itself and becoming bigger and better. You never know what's about to pop up unless you've, you know, watched it a hundred times like I have. And therein is the beauty of these first two rewinds. They were anything but predictable. They were crazy and insane. They weren't trying to be marketable. They were trying to represent the utter insanity that was early internet culture. Early. Post-2010, but you get what I mean. And so the Spotlight channel was left with a dilemma. YouTube Rewind 2013 was so big, so good, how could they ever top such a thing? Spoiler alert, they didn't. It was not for a lack of trying that YouTube Rewind 2014 so utterly failed where its predecessor had so succeeded. I believe that at this point, the Spotlight channel was still trying to put creativity into their video. They definitely were still trying to up the production value, the number of creators featured, and how they were featured, but when it came to referencing the trends of the year, they simply did not have very much to work with. I don't know about you, but I remember the meme culture landscape in Anno Domini 2014, and let me tell ya, it was Barren. They had to be very creative in spreading out the bare minimum handful of references they could make among the like hundreds of creators they had at this point. I, I don't know the exact number, I got tired of counting after 2013's video, sorry. But what makes YouTube Rewind unique among the rewinds is that because there were so few references to go around, you get a lot of the creator's actual personalities kind of peeking through here and there. There's a lot of really nice shots of b-roll of the different YouTubers just kind of hanging out and joking with each other. There's like this moment of the Vlogbrothers doing their thing, which is kind of my favorite part of the video, even though I don't watch the Vlogbrothers. It just, like it's, it's very genuine and it's, it's rare that Rewind feels genuine to who these creators actually are outside of Rewind. We didn't just get more creators this Rewind, we got more of the creators actually being themselves. And that is worth something, it's just not what we come to Rewind to see. Very few people complained that people like Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel were in YouTube Rewind 2013. And yet people had a big problem with John Oliver and Conan O'Brien being in this video. When a video that's supposed to be celebrating internet culture is kind of devoid of memes, but does feature a lot of stuff not unique to the internet, it's very easy to get the message that YouTube Rewind is no longer about celebrating internet culture, it's about celebrating the people who bring the most money to the platform. And it's with this kind of cynical thought planted in our minds that we continue on to Rewind 2015, where meme culture was once again prospering, yet the video still feels almost as empty. <laughs> Thank you.
And I say almost, because there are a few specific moments that have really good references in this video, but they're very small moments in a long video that paints a big picture that's not unlike what I was just talking about. It's absolutely not my favorite, but talking about the good first, YouTube Rewind 2015 does have a really great segment where Markiplier walks down a creepy hallway filled with YouTube grammars who look like they've gone insane, Freddy Fazbear jump scares him, and Captain Sparkles is there, MatPat is there, and everyone's wearing either black and blue or white and gold, referencing the dress, which is a good reference and I like it, and it's all set to uh, I Can't Feel My Face, which, which is a good song, it's by The Weeknd, I like it, it's good. It's my favorite, like, 10 seconds out of this whole series, but it doesn't save the rest of the video <laughs> by a long shot. There are a lot of other moments here and there throughout the video that I really like, but it's all bookended in long sequences of very generic kind of dance montages, referencing things like the whip or the evolution of clothing, whatever this video was. It's not really content, it's not really dumb internet memes or trends, it's not even unique to the year or to YouTube, so it doesn't make sense to use it here. There's even a moment towards the end of the video where they acknowledge that it's YouTube's 10 year anniversary. They reference a lot of older videos from before 2015, and the ones they reference are still the same kind of like evolution of dance and that one dance video where everyone's going crazy down the wedding procession. You know, those kinds of videos. And it's like, th those, those kinds of things happen all the time. Why are those specifically being featured in Rewind? It's all like generic, mainstream, pop kinds of videos, and it doesn't make sense for Rewind. The majority of Rewind 2015 is bland and flavorless. The moments I like are so small, the video as a whole is just the same as all the other rewinds, and worse, it, as an advertisement for YouTube, paints a picture that the platform itself is boring, which is the worst thing rewind can do. YouTube Rewind 2016 was so utterly devoid of content and anything worth talking about that it honestly became a trend to edit together your own YouTube Rewind. Shout out to Bobby Burns, who as far as I know started this trend. Shout out to myself for making this video which featured Siva Gunner, which Bobby's didn't do. Not that actual YouTube Rewind mentioned it either. See. Meme culture was very much alive in 2016, very much so. They had a lot of material to work with, and they didn't reference any of it at all. Um, unless I just missed all the videos about construction and water. What are these references to? I don't even know what they were going for with this one. And I don't care enough to figure it out. If this year's is this bad, like I said, I, I haven't seen 2018's yet. But if it's this bad, I'll be surprised. Like, 2016's is the worst I can imagine a Rewind video being. It's just... Just the formula with no content. It was very clear by 2016 that no one making YouTube Rewind was watching actual content on YouTube. 2017's was a bit better. No, no, it's not, not a bit better. 2017's is the second best YouTube Rewind. It's the only one that comes close to 2013 in my mind. Every other one I have some kind of big complaint about. And with 2014's that wasn't its fault, but with 2017 they made do. Is it perfect? Does it fix all the problems people have with YouTube as a platform? No, of course not. But that's just the thing. A lot of the problems people have with not only the videos leading up to it, but especially with YouTube Rewind 2017, are not problems with Rewind at all, they're just problems with YouTube as a platform, which 
the Spotlight channel isn't capable of fixing, no matter who they feature. People have problems with the algorithms, they have problems with things like fidget spinners being popular, they have problems with the polls being popular. Individual creators can still succeed, uh, individual good content can still succeed, and when the good creative stuff is getting the same amount of attention as something like Despacito or the Pauls, then it makes sense for them to be featured as much as those things were in YouTube Rewind 2017. But in 2017, as far as I know, the big things on the platform were things like slime, things like fidget spinners, the Pauls, what is it called, the shooting star meme. <laughs> Even old memes coming back from the dead was very much a thing that happened on the platform, and I was actually really surprised and happy to see that get acknowledged in Rewind. YouTube Rewind 2017 is very honest about what the big things on the platform were, and it presents it all in an interesting and entertaining way, and I'm not sure why people hate it so much. They even feature a lot of really good talented creators who hadn't been featured in the past. Like, a lot of the animation channels got featured fairly prominently, and they hadn't been before. In fact, several of those channels are ones that I only subscribed to because of Rewind. And I don't think that's true of any other channels. Ever. 2017's the only rewind that's gotten me to subscribe to someone. That's 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 worth something. This is why I even have a no drama rule. I'm not here to talk about when the algorithm hurts someone's feelings. I'm here to talk about content. And the content in YouTube Rewind 2017 was good. And I liked it. It's a fun video. It's a crazy video. It's a video that contains things that are kinda weird and strange and a little cringy, but that's how things were last year. But the story does not end there. The story ends with a video I have not seen yet. YouTube Rewind 2018. And so we will now cut to my first reaction ever to this video. According to what I've heard, it's, it's pretty bad. some predictions, or rather, it was spoiled for me that Will Smith was in it. Oh, Fortnite, obviously. Uh, I believe I saw someone say that PewDiePie is not in it, but the, you know, but can you do this chair meme is in the video. Hit or miss, the TikTok meme will be in there, but maybe I'll be Tracer will not, because that's an actually good song. Oh, it's rewind Yo. time. It's yeah, rewind time. Rewind, I would want Fortnite. What would you Marquez want? Brownlee. I don't know who that is, but okay, Will Smith. I uh, should. You need to. You need to thank the bus driver. All right. Is it gonna start like the music video bit now? This isn't just like an intro gimmick. I guess the creators in the video are the ones controlling what's happening, but I'm pretty sure it's all scripted. Was K-pop very big this year? Why, why isn't it a specific K-pop reference? Like, K-pop isn't specific to 2018. Was Melting Lipstick a trend? Was, it, was that a trend? Mukbang. Muk, mukbang's not a... That's not a 2018 thing. That's been around. Oh, it's Ro. I love Ro. She's good. I, like, never watch her videos, but she's cool. It's a good dog. Marshmallow was in it last year. That guy doesn't even know who Marshmallow is. What's the point of what I'm watching? What is even going on? Oh, the odd, one, odd one's out. And he's interacting. Oh, the little spider dude. I like how the, the animators are like incorporated in the real video this time. That's, that's an upgrade from last time, so that's good. Trevor Noah, get out of my rewind. <laughs> I knew he was gonna be in it too, actually. I love I love all the animated characters being in there with the real people. That's good. I, I like that. I wish that this was like YouTube Rewind and not people talking about YouTube Rewind. Yeah, no, that that that's it. That's the point. I'm so proud of this community, you guys. I'm I'm missing what they're saying because I'm trying to talk over them. I expected this to be a music video. The, 
the whole idea of this is that like anyone can control this and will you know let give give the people what they want but but they're not they're not giving the people what they want who who wanted this <laughs> they're just they're just talking they're just talking like what they're saying is important i guess like like let's let's make sure this thing is represented in rewind okay reference it heck yeah let's read the comments i get down with that 2016 was the rock 2018 will be wait 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 i want to i want to pause on that screen let's give the people what they gotta be one huge battle royale Interesting how we haven't actually seen them do a big battle royale. They're just sitting around a campfire. I love doing that in Fortnite. Oh, uh, don't forget to put Baby Shark in it. I guess that makes sense. None of these people have profile pictures. Let's see, 2018 Rewind should have football. Okay. Uh, Yodeling Kid, he was in it. BTS Idol should be in it. We better see the Fortnite dance. There's Fortnite dances last year. I don't, I feel like this isn't what the people want. ASMR. ASMR. Are those actual ASMR YouTubers? Because I feel like that's what people want. Like, ASMR isn't a specifically 2018 thing. We want to see the YouTubers who do things like mukbang and ASMR doing specific 2018 trends. Why is there a giant ball? Is that a reference? Most years I feel like the creators of YouTube Rewind are trying too hard to just... Like, they don't watch YouTube, they're just trying to recreate Rewind, but with a different year... Shut up, Will Smith. But with a different year filled in in the blanks, if that makes sense. This year, I feel like they were aware of, like, some of the trends, but, like, not... Not any of the ones people cared about. But then they also... I, I feel like they have also never watched a YouTube Rewind. <laughs> Which, that's fine. You know, be experimental with the formula. Do something new. That's cool. But, like, make it good and worth watching. <laughs> oh, it's oh it's the guy. It's the guy who makes things out in the wilderness. They didn't, they didn't reference... They didn't... They actually did not reference the TikTok memes. Which... Makes sense because this is YouTube and not TikTok. Um, what's he making? Is he making a rewind button? And I bet I bet he's making a rewind button. Yeah, he's making it. He's making a rewind button. That's what I thought. What was this? YouTube Rewind 2018 was the last thing I expected YouTube Rewind 2018 to be. Because the problem isn't that Will Smith's in it. The problem isn't that. There are late night show hosts doing Fortnite dances. And the problem isn't Fortnite either. Fortnite is maybe the only sort of relevant thing in the video. And that's why it sticks out so much. It's the only thing they actually featured that makes sense as something specifically 2018. The worst part about it is that it feels like they really were trying to fix the problems a lot of people had with the last couple of years of Rewind. They really, they really thought they were giving us something that better featured the creators and the community and what the community wanted out of Rewind. But in doing so, they featured almost nothing that w happened that was relevant in the year. They featured very few specific creators or specific events. It was all very vague shoutouts. The campfire scene especially, I feel like, would have been a lot more meaningful had these creators done actual full videos exploring, like, what women in 2018 did that was so meaningful, what single mothers and those other groups that they kind of shout out. If they had done videos talking about why that's worthwhile, their own videos, and YouTube had just promoted them, that would have been a lot more meaningful than what, what, what they had here in YouTube Rewind. Basically what I'm saying is that they may as well not have made YouTube Rewind 2018 at all. It was a waste of everyone's time. It was a waste of YouTube's money. Uh, and at the very least, some small consolation we have is that YouTube knows it now. This is the most disliked video 
on their own site. A video that they uploaded. And the best we can hope for is that next year they will actually listen to creators rather than saying, yeah, you have control uh, to talk about these very basic topics that we let you talk about. <laughs> and uh, that's it.